We welcome you to worship this morning. Our opening hymn today is actually from the Lutheran Service Builder digital uh, hymns. Uh, it's number 980, so if you are using your hymnal, you won't find that in the hymnal. It's uh, an additional hymn. Uh, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. follow the order of prayer and preaching on page 260, and we continue with the opening versicles. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Continue with the Old Testament canticle.
Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me. For you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the 12th chapter of Romans. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn 845.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned to Peter, he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, There are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in the responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. The Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hymn number 857, Lord, help us walk your servant way. mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus. Amen. The text for today is from the gospel reading, Matthew chapter 16, particularly uh, the following verses. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Your friends in Jesus, I recently read an article, short article, entitled, What is Life Purpose? And the article seeks to provide a very simple description of uh, what it means to have purpose in life, and how, how do we understand that? How do we define that concept of purpose in life? This is what the article says. It says, your life purpose consists of the central motivating aims of your life, the reasons you get up in the morning. Purpose can guide life decisions, influence behavior, shape goals, offer a sense of direction, and create meaning. For some people, purpose is connected to vocation or meaningful, satisfying work. 
For others, their purpose lies in their responsibilities to their family or friends. Others seek meaning through spirituality or religious beliefs. Some people may find their purpose clearly expressed in all these aspects of life. Purpose will be unique for everyone. What you identify as your path may be different from others. What's more, your purpose can actually shift and change throughout life in response to the evolving priorities and fluctuations of your own experience. Questions that may come up when you reflect upon your life purpose are, who am I, where do I belong, and when do I feel fulfilled? Well, to be sure, it's useful to have a purpose in life, and this is not a, a, a faith-based article. This is probably more, it fits more in the category of uh, psychology, perhaps. Uh, but it seeks to understand this notion of, of purpose. What is it that makes a person want to get up in the morning? What is it that gives them a life that is uh, meaningful and has direction to it? All of that kind of fits in that category of purpose. And there's distinctions made between purpose and goals. Uh, for example, purpose is kind of the more overarching concept of meaning, and goals are the uh, items that you pursue in order to fulfill your purpose. Well, what does that have to do with today's gospel reading? Well, what it has to do with today's gospel is this. The Lord Jesus had a very, very specific purpose in life. Very specific. And that purpose was to save the world. That's why Jesus came. In fact, it's been said that Jesus is the only person ever born with the express purpose of dying. That's why Christ was born at Christmas, was so that he might grow up and fulfill the purpose as well as the plan of God 33 years later to complete what God's plan uh, said, and that was to accomplish our salvation. And so today, in our gospel reading, the Lord Jesus articulates that purpose in a rather interesting way. And so in our gospel, we hear this interaction between Jesus and Peter. And Peter figured fairly prominently in last week's gospel lesson, where Jesus asked, uh, who do people say that I am? And Peter very boldly confesses that about Jesus. He says that, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so today, Peter and Jesus are having another conversation. And Jesus tells his disciples, including Peter, that this is what's going to be happening in the next few days. And our text for today is, uh, occurs just before Jesus begins that journey to the cross. And so Jesus says to his disciples and Peter, he says, uh, he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and be killed and on the third day be raised. And then it says, Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Well, how does Jesus respond to that? He responds by turning to Peter and saying, Get behind me, Satan. Satan. Get behind me. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. It seems that based on last week's gospel reading, that Peter 
knew who Jesus was, and he calls him the Christ. The word Christ means Messiah or anointed one. And he knew who Jesus was, but he did not seem at this point, as many of the disciples didn't, to clearly understand the purpose for which Jesus came. He didn't understand that the purpose of Jesus' entire life and death was to reconcile the world back to God, to fulfill what humanity could not do because of its sin. And so last week we hear Jesus boldly saying, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, but now we hear him saying, however, even though I seem to know who you are, I don't know what you came to do yet, and therefore he rebukes him. And he says, you can't go and suffer. That's not what the Messiah is supposed to be doing. The Messiah is supposed to be providing other kind of deliverance, uh, military sort of deliverance. Now, Peter doesn't actually say that, at least as not as far as I know, but that was the, the common thought of what the Messiah should be doing in that day, that the Messiah should come to deliver uh, people in a kind of a military, dramatic fashion from Roman oppression. And so Jesus says that the problem with Peter is that he is thinking about the things of man and not about the things of God. Well, what specifically is Jesus talking about here? He's talking about fulfilling his purpose. He's talking about doing what he came to do. Now, to be sure, Peter had the best of intentions. Peter was not being mean or off-putting, really. Uh, he was a follower, a disciple of Jesus. He loved Jesus. And he just didn't, he could not comprehend that this is what had to happen. And so Jesus says, you have in mind, Peter, you're setting your mind on the things of man. In other words, you don't understand that the purpose for which I came is to go to the cross for you, Peter, and for the world. That my heavenly Father, God so loved the world that he sent me for this very purpose. And so Peter had the best of intentions, but Jesus calls him a hindrance. It's an interesting word, hindrance. The, the Greek word is skandalon, which is where we get the English word scandal from. Jesus says, you are a, a, a scandal, and the word means trap or snare, uh, or it's also defined, for example, in Corinthians as stumbling block. He says, you are a stumbling block to me. And all of this brings to mind uh, not only the temptation that Jesus in his full humanity has here, but also the temptations that he has in other places in Scripture. For example, when he uh, is in the wilderness for 40 days and he is tempted by Satan, uh, and he withstands that, those, those three temptations that are listed, uh, he, he is, withstands those, again, accomplishing what we can't accomplish because had he given in to any one of them, then his death would have not mattered, his sacrifice would have made no difference, and we would still be in our sins unless God chose another uh, way to get us out of that mess. And so Jesus says to Peter, you are a stumbling block. Paul says something very similar of the cross in Corinthians where he says the cross is a stumbling block to the Jews, a, a scandalon, a scandal, a trap, a snare. It kind of catches them so that they don't go the way of the cross in terms of their own faith and belief in Jesus. But Jesus was not deterred from his purpose. Not in the wilderness, not later on in Gethsemane where he prays, Father, if it be your will, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. And not here, even though the temptation may have 
even been great here. When Peter says, no, Lord, don't go that way. Go a different way. Well, that's the things of man versus the things of God. You see, the things of God in this context involve the sacrifice of Jesus, the suffering of Jesus, and the cross, the rejection of Jesus. All of that that is part of Jesus' passion is part of the things of God that are being talked about here, where Jesus gives his life for the sins of the world. And he did what we could not do. And because he did what we could not do, he has accomplished what we cannot accomplish. And that is the forgiveness and reconciliation that we need from our Heavenly Father. You see, sin causes us to have in mind or to set our minds on the things of man. Just as Peter set his mind on the things of man here. For example, one author put it this way. When it comes to setting our mind on the things of God or on the things of man, he said, it goes without saying that the world wants to redo Jesus. As someone recently wrote, we live in a time where the world permits everything and forgives nothing. Permits everything and forgives nothing. If there is no such thing as sin, then you sure don't need a savior from sin. Still, the world wants to make use of Jesus to justify war or anti-war movements, to cloak sin and claim his approval, to use as an example, or to sell books and movies. Redoing Jesus. Saying, we want Jesus to be someone or something other than what he says his purpose was to be. And that was to go the way of the cross for the sins of the world. So sin causes us to want to redo Jesus. We are easily deterred from the things of God as well. We want to take the easy way when it comes to following Jesus. We like to pick and choose what we think should, we would want to believe in and what we don't, or, what, or the way we would want to follow and the way we don't. That's having in mind the things of man. Making Jesus or making the Word of God suit us rather than saying, Lord, help me and my life suit what your Word says. And when we struggle with our faith, when we want to give up, when we doubt God's presence or God's love or God's mercy or God's care, or when we are outright rejecting God and His Word and putting ourselves in that rightful place where God ought to be, that's having in mind the things of man. But thanks be to God, we also have this. We have a Savior who did not do what we do and who does not do what we do. For when he was tempted to take the easy way, to take the way that is self-serving and self-satisfying, he didn't do it. He went the way of the cross. And that's the big thing that God wanted to accomplish. And as his redeemed children, where he suffered and died and rose again, as he says, to redeem us and to defeat death and to put us right with God, as his redeemed children, we have a renewed purpose. We have a renewed understanding of the things of God. We know, for example, that God's ways are not our ways. As Isaiah 55 says when we read, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. For as as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. In other words, we don't know everything about the ways and the thoughts of God 
God has told us what we need to know, and that's the way of Jesus and the way of the cross. And so, God's, the things of God are those things that, that enable us to understand that God is bigger than we are. God is bigger than our thoughts. God is bigger than our minds. And that His ways are not our ways, but we believe His Word anyway because it tells us what we need to know above all. And that's the way to heaven. Having in mind the things of God or setting our mind on the things of God also means that we know and understand the, that clearly, not by faith, not only how to live, but how to die. And Jesus gives us a, a glimpse of what it means to live according to the things of God and having our mind set on the things of God when he says to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life it will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Well, what does that even mean? It means if our purpose in this world is to save this life, then we are at risk of losing the life that really matters. The life in the, of eternity with God. For Jesus says, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his life? In other words, all the wealth and power and riches and whatever, all the glory and fame, or you name it, that this world can bring. If we have it all, as we seem to want these days, if we have it all, yet forfeit our life, our eternal life, we have nothing. For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of the Father, and then he will repay each according to what he has done. And what he has done is not salvation by works, but it's service out of faith in Christ. So Jesus teaches us and reminds us by faith that the higher things of God involve living a life of service, of repentance, of daily repentance, and of service to God and our neighbor. He teaches us how to live, live and understanding the things of God also gives us a clear understanding of how to die. We die trusting in Jesus. We die clinging to the hope of the one who went the way that we fail to go, to, to go Jesus. We die clinging to that perfect man who lived the perfect life, who fulfilled his purpose perfectly, and who came so that we might have life forever. He came and fulfilled the purpose that he was sent for. The purpose to give his life in your place so that you might have what you can't earn. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. And all of that comes not according to the things of man, which says... You deserve what you get. You earn what you get. And you get it because you work for it. That's all the things of man talking. The things of God says you don't get what you deserve. Jesus got what you deserve. And you get what you don't deserve. His mercy, His grace, forgiveness, and life. And because you have all that and more, you also have a purpose of living for him and for one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds firmly rooted on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayers. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those dealing with the reality of this COVID virus, not only those close to us, but also those far away, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray that you would give us clarity of purpose, that you would help us to see that uh, your ways are not always our ways. In fact, rarely are they. And your thoughts are not our thoughts. Yet we pray that you would help us to cling to you. When we desire to go to the easy way in life and put forward and first the things of man rather than the things of God, we pray for your forgiveness and pardon. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would give us a purpose in life that sees life as an opportunity to serve you and serve others. As Paul says to the letter, in his letter to the Corinthians, that even though he realizes that being in the body means to be away from you, that while he is in the body, he will make it his aim to please you. Help us to make that our aim as well. We thank you for the express purpose that you came in order to give your life for each of us. And we pray that knowing that purpose, as we trust in faith what you have done for us, that you would enable us to serve you. We pray this, in the, to, we, we offer this prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the New Testament canticle.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Our closing hymn is Christ Be My Leader. pray this service has been a blessing to you and reminded you of the mercies of God in Jesus. Uh, this service is being recorded well before uh, you are watching it. Uh, so I am going to fast forward a little bit to the 30th of uh, August and mention that um, uh, I've been on holidays for a couple weeks and I will be back in the office um, this coming week. So just to let you know that. Uh, in the meantime, we hope that God is uh, caring for you, and we pray that uh, God gives you a renewed sense of uh, purpose in life uh, in light of his sacrifice in Jesus and the hope that is ours through the cross, the way of sacrifice that Jesus went, and the empty tomb. Uh, that's the good news that we cling to and cherish and the hope that we have, the hope that our sins are forgiven, and we are reconciled to God, and we look forward to that day when we will see Jesus in heaven forever. God's peace to you all, and uh, the Lord be with you.